I'm always looking for more ways to watch my favorite movies or play the latest games on the go. And Vitcher is the perfect companion for just that. Vitcher One are the next generation XR glasses you've been waiting for that let you stream all your favorite console games and apps on a 120 inch virtual screen with full 3D support anytime, anywhere. The Vitcher One iPhone pack comes with everything you'll need right out of the box. You get the XR glasses and the Vitcher HDMI adapter for iPhone, which, as you've probably guessed, lets you plug the XR glasses directly into your phone. The HDMI adapter is also perfect for direct play, too. Connect the magnetic cable to your XR glasses and plug the adapter into your Xbox or PlayStation 5's HDMI port, and in moments, you'll have an XR experience right in your home. Even if you're not home near your PlayStation or Xbox, you can connect your consoles remotely via Vitcher's neckband, which comes pre-packaged with the best remote play apps out there. PlayStation Play and XBX Play. Now I can take my games everywhere I go thanks to Vitcher One. All the controls are built into the glasses too, so I can easily adjust the brightness and background with the quick button press to get the best picture whether it's day or night. Grab your very own Vitcher One, now available on Amazon, so you'll get them in less than two days with a 30-day free return option, so no risk to you at all, but trust me, they're awesome. Just use code VITCHER10 to get 10% off with my link below. This month, we're looking at TV shows, celebrating the time-honored trope of the Halloween episode. So I'm picking out some of my favorite Halloween episodes by decade. Last time I talked about the 90s with the Family Matters episode, steve featuring the evil Urkel dummy. I wish we could stick around in the 90s longer, but we're gonna move on to the new millennium. Well, the perimeter I set is 2000 to 2009, and I just wanted to clarify, yes, I am aware that the new millennium technically starts with 2001 because there was never a year zero, but that would mean the year 2000 was still the 90s, and 1990 was still the 80s, and 1980 was still the 70s. I was born in 1980, so does that mean I was born in the 70s? You know, the decade starts on the fucking zero. That's what I say. The 2000s is the 2000s. Do you like when I rant about stupid shit? It's fun. When it comes to the 2000s, there is a steep drop off for me. I don't really remember as many shows as I was mostly watching movies. So I went back and I watched through a lot of 2000s Halloween episodes. I did a lot of Googling to find out what gets recommended the most. Uh, there's Malcolm in the Middle, That's So Raven, Friends, How I Met Your Mother, SpongeBob, and many others. But I gotta admit, I don't really know a whole lot about any of those shows and I'm not gonna fake it. I definitely know Family Guy, but in the 2000s, they didn't really have any Halloween episodes. Sure, there were some spooky ones and they had the Grim Reaper and all that, but none that could really be considered Halloween episodes until the 2010s. South Park, of course, would be a viable pick, though most of their classic Halloween episodes happened at the end of the 90s. There's still some good ones in the 2000s, like Hell on Earth, where Satan throws a big Halloween party, but I feel like the show that really deserves the spotlight, that has the most consistent run of any Halloween episodes, is The Simpsons. The Simpsons has had a Halloween episode every year since 1990. I never understood why they're called Treehouse of Horror episodes, because from what I've seen, only the first one actually has a treehouse as the intro. Anyway, the format is a fun grab bag of spooky stories. Each one has an intro and three separate segments. So it's like three short episodes in one. They're always different. You never know what you're going to get. And I especially like the 90s episodes, but we're in the 2000s now. So I sat down and watched every Simpsons Halloween episode from 2000 to 2009. And that made it a very tough decision because some episodes had a segment that I thought was really great, but then a segment that was just okay. And then another one that was pretty good. So there's no episodes where all three segments are a guaranteed win. So I spent a long time thinking, you know, I like this segment from this one, but that segment from... So anyway, I've decided to go with Treehouse of Horror number 14 from 2003 because, hey, it's this episode's 20th anniversary. So it begins with a weird looking version of Charlie Brown and Lucy going through their trick or treat candy. And then the masks come off and it's actually Bart and Lisa. It already wins me over spoofing Charlie Brown. 
Which is why it's a tough call, because there's another episode that has a full segment based on the Great Pumpkin. Anyway, they fight over the candy. It gets super violent. Homer gets stabbed with a fireplace poker. He hurls a faming log at them, which burns the grandpa, who's still feeling cold. Uh, man, the Simpsons, when they fight, they really fight. It's messed up. Homer rolls the kids in a carpet, beats them with a bat, and then Marge pulls out a gun and blows his brains out. God damn. And that brings us to the traditional title screen, Dripping in Blood. But this is where the intro really gets my attention. The aliens are watching this all go down and they say, they're showing a Halloween episode in November? Yeah, so this episode aired on November 2nd. I found that very strange, but as I was going through all the episodes, I noticed in the 2000s, most of the Halloween episodes aired after Halloween. You wanna know why? Because of baseball. Fucking baseball. Halloween is October 31st. You can have a Halloween episode anytime that month, but after the 31st, Halloween is over. Just the fact that it had to move because of fucking baseball is a travesty, but they at least acknowledged it quite a few times, actually. In Treehouse number 16 from 2005, in the intro, the aliens are watching a baseball game and comment on how it's taking too long and the Halloween episode can't start until it's over. So they speed up time, which ends up destroying the universe. Anyway, let me get back on track here or else this review will be in November. The aliens jump ahead and start celebrating Christmas and then the credits finish and the episode begins. Whew. The first segment, Reaper Madness, starts up with the Grim Reaper paying a visit to the Simpsons. He says he's come for Bart. They all run, which becomes the cliche, sped up Benny Hill chase, which I've seen parodied many times before I even knew what the source was. Homer successfully knocks out the Reaper, so now they live in a world without death. Okay, so I had to find out because of the similarity to a certain Family Guy episode, I wanted to know which one came first because we've all heard Family Guy rips off The Simpsons, but it appears that the Family Guy episode, Death is a Bitch, was first. <gasps> well, what are you saying? I'm saying The Simpsons suck. Why you? <laughs> so give that point to Family Guy. But as far as the whole trope of the Grim Reaper, we'd have to go down a big rabbit hole. So anyway, Nobody anywhere is able to die, so Homer takes the Reaper's robe and takes over his job of dealing death out to people. It's kind of like that Tim Allen movie where Santa falls off his roof and then he, he's got to take over being Santa, except much less cheery. There's a good joke where he tries to take an old guy's life, but the old guy says, where's the regular Reaper? As if he's already had death come for him enough times. Then there's some more good dark comedy where Lisa brings Homer as the Reaper into the classroom as a show what my dad does kind of day, and they bring in a homeless guy and kill him. Yeah! It's morbid, it's messed up, but with The Simpsons, you wouldn't want it any other way. Then Homer starts abusing his power in twisted ways by killing a bunch of people at a sporting event just so he can get a good seat. By the Reaper's rules, he has to only take out people who are on the list. So next it turns out he has to kill Marge, which sends him into a panic. But in the next scene, it seems as if he's carried out the deed, taking her corpse to God and asking to be released from his reaper duties. So God reverts him back to normal, only to find out it wasn't Marge. So in an epic finale, Homer gets away on a motorcycle, having tricked God. I don't think you can get any more epic than that. The next segment, Frankenstein, I figured I'd probably love because it's a Frankenstein spoof. It centers around the character Professor Frink, who has a backstory where he had a falling out with his father, and before they could make amends, he died of a shark bite. But he saved his father's corpse and reanimates him on a slab with lightning, Frankenstein style. But his dad isn't so glad to be back because some of his certain um, body parts have been replaced. So then he goes on the loose to steal other people's parts. It doesn't quite go where you think it is, but just the thought of a Frankenstein monster going around stealing dicks is quite humorous and disturbing. 
So he's ripping out organs, spines, everything until he becomes a collage of different people. He's liking his new look, and with everything he steals, he becomes more confident. But Lisa talks him out of it and says he needs to be there for his son on his important day winning the Nobel Prize. So he comes up on stage, hugs it out with his son, but then he can't resist going on a final rampage, stealing all the smart brains from the room. It ends with Dr. Frank kicking his father in the crotch, which by his scientific calculations is how to make him dead again. But his father, in his dying words, is proud of him. And next, he's carrying his father's soul around in a box. It's kind of a strange and sad segment. It's not really that funny either, I don't think. Uh, I don't like it anywhere near as much as the Reaper segment. The final segment, Stop the World, I Wanna Goof Off, is a parody of the Twilight Zone episode, a kind of stopwatch, where a man has a watch that stops time. It's very common when Simpsons parodies the Twilight Zone, and I love it whenever they do because the Twilight Zone is my number one favorite show. Bart finds an ad in a comic book for the stopwatch, which is funny just to think any kid with 49 cents could buy a device that stops time. The first thing he does is stop Lisa and puts her finger up her nose before he resumes time again. And with that, you already know everything you need to. You know Bart is such a prankster that he's only going to use that watch for mischief. But his friend Milhouse says they should get ahead on their homework, which is a very lame idea for Bart. So it makes you wonder. If you had a stopwatch like this, what would you do? I'd probably get next year's Monster Madness done, and Angry Video Game Nerd, and all the million things I'm working on. So they're going around pulling people's pants down, stealing Homer's donuts, changing signs, doing every kind of dumb mischief possible. Huh? Huh? But what I really like is how they sometimes show the change happen instantaneously so you can see it happen from the perspective of the character who the trick's being played on. That kind of thing is not done often enough, so I think it was really clever. But soon, the whole town is trying to figure out what's going on, and eventually the mayor uses an ultraviolet light to trace the kid's footsteps. So an entire mob chases them, they freeze time once more, but then the watch breaks, so everything is stuck frozen forever. So then they just go around doing whatever they want, it's a strange thing to think about. If everything was frozen, sure, you could get away with anything, but what would the point be? Either way, for Bart, this is a fantasy come true, but it's also pretty morbid because his family is just frozen there in the living room, probably rotting away. Homer's head keeps coming off. Even Milhouse brings his parents back together, I assume they were separated, which he says feels kind of hollow. The whole thing has this unsettling vibe, which is perfect for the Simpsons brand of humor. So then Bart and Milhouse agree it's getting old, so they read a book about how to repair watches. It takes them 15 years to learn it, and what I really love about this is that you actually see them age. Everyone knows the Simpsons never age. Bart will always be a kid, Maggie will always be a baby, and so on. But here, you actually see Bart as an adult, which you don't really get to see that often, to my knowledge. Uh, we know The Simpsons has been on the air for over 30 years, yet the characters stay the same. Although, if you really think about it, it wouldn't be that long. According to BingeClock.com, the total time it would take to watch the entire series of The Simpsons would be 15 days and 8 hours, which of course is a long time. But if you space that out into all the days and nights we see happen in the show, I'm guessing it probably represents a month maybe a few months or a year or even a few years of The Simpsons' life, so it's not really that weird that they don't age. Anyway, just throwing that out there. Basically, it's cool to see adult Bart. So they return time to normal, but now to everyone else, it seems Bart and Milhouse have rapidly aged all of a sudden. Not sure how everyone else is still the same and didn't starve or rot to death, but it doesn't matter. So Bart gives Lisa a chance to play with the stopwatch, and now, for some reason, it just makes a whole bunch of random shit occur. Wow. Even when it doesn't make sense, The Simpsons is always a lot of fun, and this ending plays into the show's wacky and zany quality. I like this segment the best of the three, although it's a little more sci-fi than horror. It's actually a lot like something you'd see on Rick and Morty. I just love weird shit like this, especially when it deals with time travel or anything of that nature. Anyway, we have one more Halloween episode to talk about from the 2010s, coming up next. 